everyone hello before we start today's session please type audible in the comment section if i'm audible to you all please type audible into the comment yeah thank you so much for the confirmation a very good evening to all of you my name is shweta and on behalf of punya health team i would like to welcome you all for today's webinar session which is on how to manage women's mental health during this corona outbreak and i would like to uh, thank you all for taking out your time and joining with us today uh, let me introduce punya health first uh, punya health is a platform which provides healthcare solution focusing completely on women's mental and physical health together punya health assures a very authentic reliable guidance to the patient by connecting them to the industry's experts our main objective is not only to provide not only to provide a true guidance to the patient but also to make a difference into their life by positive a valuable difference into their life so today we have in our panel we have our two experts here dr chitra arvind hello ma'am and yeah and dr deepa gopinath who will be here with us covering all various topics and addressing our all queries so today uh, okay let me introduce dr chitra arvind she has served as a consultant psychologist for about almost a day almost two decades she pursued her phd and mphil from university of madras during her career dr chitra has provided outstanding consultant services to various corporates educational institution social bodies through counseling and training program a lot of articles has been published not only in india but international levels and her book which is manase manase is a wonderful creation to the society to understand an importance of mental health in various aspects of a child's life she has also authored several magazine books and has been a resource person for various you know uh, various platform virtual visual and print media like hindustan times z tv raj raj tv tandi tv etc so hello ma'am and welcome from punya health yeah uh, let me introduce dr deepa gopinath as well uh, she, uh, she has served as a consultant she has served as a consultant uh, psychiatrist for all of uh, almost a decade running women mental health care programs child guidance clinic worked under several uh, several uh, specialty clinics she has also worked as a part of community mental health team and attended outreach camps made uh, attended outreach camps made home visit attended patient and rehabilitation center she has contributed to the education industry as well by providing training and guidance to not only students but also to the teachers so thank you for both of you for joining us today thank you deepa ma'am for joining us today here and before we start let me explain you how you how we can talk like audience and we can talk during this session during this webinar if you have any question please write in the comment or in the chat section we will be definitely taking those questions in the during in, during our chat conversation so uh, so let let's start ma'am actually our overall uh, our overall thing like overall current situation is across world uh, due to this corona outbreak is disturbing us a lot and it is directly affecting it is directly affecting our mental health so what uh, be it a five years old kid or a housewife or a working woman or a you know a, a teenager group or a elder person who is sitting in our home everybody is struggling in their own sort of issues with this current situation so my question to you is my first question to you is how to deal with this like corona outbreak or this covid 19 how it is affecting the complete woman health overall and what should we do in this yeah yeah deepa ma'am please uh, throw some light on that yeah yeah it is uh, covid 19 all around um, i think uh, a major reason uh, for uh, for uh, this becoming such a topic of discussion is of course it's all around also that there's so much of in all around now uh, you know we are in the digital age where we are information 24/7 now uh, we switch on the tv we check our smartphone wherever we uh, we we look around there is in corona we don't know whether we are dealing with the right information all the time as well so there is a lot of uh, room for even uh, rumors to be uh, spreading around 
now yes. when there's so much of information that is uh, surrounding us about uh, corona and there's not much you no know, they don't we don't have much experience now that's the uh, biggest difference you know in this pandemic that we don't know about this virus we don't we don't know how this has uh, you know what kind of uh, outbreak uh, we, we don't have experience from any earlier about uh, corona so the uncertainty is adding to the complication here you know we don't know what the outcome is going to be like when are we again going to return to normalcy so i think uh, under such circumstances to keep ourselves uh, stress free we have to take a break from information once which would mean taking break from corona once in a while you know so we yeah. would write a corona time out for some time in a day where we are away from all our gadgets and social media and news where you know it's only corona all around and try to uh, reconnect with people who are physically around us you know our family spend some good time quality time with our uh, family try to do all those things that we thought we never had the time for and um, keep ourselves uh, stress free while keeping you know, health information in mind to just uh, guide us in actions you know take the necessary precautions in terms of hygiene and social distancing and uh, but at the same time try to ourselves a little stress free from so much of information Yeah, ma'am. That is absolutely a wonderful suggestion which we got. Uh, Chitra, ma'am, please, uh, you also share your views on that. Okay. So first of all, good evening to all of you. And uh, regarding COVID nineteen, so that's the talk of the whole world right now. And uh, as a psychologist, what I would like to say is, first of all, uh, when we take stress, there are some stresses which are under our control. In that case, we use problem absolutely. solving, coping strategies. Like whatever we could, we can head on face with the stress and solve it. but then mm-hmm. the, there are certain situations in our own life even apart from covid 19 like uh, you know death of some uh, close to one like tsunami yes. so this falls into such a category where it is out of our control so Absolutely. here uh, what we have to do is we have to just follow the emotion focused coping strategy so adding to dr deepa's comments what are the emotion focused coping strategy we could follow right now is we have to focus on things which are in our control right now that means mm-hmm. we got to follow a right routine or a light right lifestyle like eating on time eating nutritious food and then uh, you have to do a moderate <laughs> exercise at least at least at the least four days a week and then the third thing is having a right amount of sleep so these things itself will take care of our immune system and uh, you know you are we are taking lot of precautions right away but then adding to this very easy everyday lifestyle itself can manage our immune system as well as like uh, like she rightly said lot of other things where we have lot of abundant of time so it is all about improving our positive attitude towards the situation it's attitude all it matters rather than what's yes. happening how we take it so attitude yes. faith and uh, you know faith in the humanity and all that only can save us in this very difficult situation yes ma'am perfectly said actually so that is what the uh, the outcome and that is what the thing we should do in our day to day life that is what the suggestion okay ma'am another thing is like uh, seeking mental health still mm-hmm. the stigma or it is considered as a taboo normally people don't want to talk about it and how educate our near and dear ones so that they will be talking us be it our child be it our elder people whatever so how to do it like how to educate them yeah so it's very understood that it's a meant uh, stigma but then stigma is breaking nowadays like i what i could see in my practice 10 years before and what's happening right now i could see the stigma is breaking it's a good news and yes, when we see public in the park and all they will ask whether do you have cholesterol do you have uh, diabetes like as if it's a rich asset they would ask but nobody yes. <laughs> talks about depression stress yes. they never talk they keep it hush hush thing so yes. nowadays because of uh, you know bollywood actors like the deepika padukone who has uh, you know done lot of things to break the stigma on depression so only depression is known to the public right away but there are many many other uh, mental health conditions which are actually crippling our society right now and okay. we should create lot of awareness to it awareness is the key to break the stigma first of all and okay. like it or not one in four according to the who statistics one in four are actually suffering from mental health depression condition. lot of okay. awareness about it should be created for example like you know people who are traveling with people who are working with also may suffer from mental health issues but they but usually what visual media projects is there are mental health people who are on the streets you know dressed in rags those are the people with mental health problem even mm-hmm. educated people who are walking into me ask you know am i mad why are you even asking me to go for counseling so this is a very uh, silly thing i should say yes, when we have yes. 99.5 degrees of fever also we rush to the physician 
similarly when we have some issues which are like out of control we all are human beings we all have mixed emotions like uh, feeling upset or depressed all that is common but when things go out of control in you know intensity and frequency and affecting our everyday right uh, no routine that is the time we should seek the help of a psychologist but yes, what sir. when you know when people come actually only when they are like you know no way can be controlled by their home like too much of anger burst out or in the you know the legal conditions like you know when they are in the court of law that those are the times actually people are brought to the you know to the psychiatrists and psychologists so this mm-hmm. condition can be taken away as you rightly said through lot of awareness only we got to create yeah ma'am so how like what you will be suggesting like do we have to promote this or education has to be provided in the curriculum or how like what is the strategy by what i would suggest is we can you know media can take media is a very strong platform through which we have to create lot of awareness by okay. watching some south indian and north indian movies you know to quote one movie of three and all we can say there are some significance on bipolar disorder as reached yes. lot of public and also yes. schizophrenia so likewise they are the powerful medium so they are the ones who can create lot of awareness and we we as a psychologists and psychiatrists also together we have to join and do lot of campaigns yes ma'am and also come out people who are like already been treated and all that should come out and say that okay i'm right now fine i'm not a, you know how you could think in life and lot of myths are there also attached so awareness is the only thing and through visual medias is a better way i think to you know break the stigma to make this okay stigma uh, has been uh, instrumental actually in uh, preventing us from uh, from preventing the public from knowing more about uh, mental health now uh, stigma goes hand in hand with uh, mental health problems so you know like ma'am said uh the, the time they take to reach a uh, you know mental uh, health the doctor uh, is you know almost like uh, if there have been so many that range from 10 months to 10 years from their onset of symptoms so mm-hmm. that much of time goes in you know uh, going all around but before reaching a mental health practitioner and stigma plays a major role uh, in that now uh, just to uh, one of ma'am's points apart from said i think success stories are uh, going to play a very important because there are so many myths not just about mental health problems but also about people who suffer from uh, such uh, kind of illness be it severe mental illness and mental illness uh, you know uh, we have to be able to project to people as to how well they are able to perform after or, or you know while they are under treatment they are capable of uh, you know uh, completing their education they are capable of going for a job they are capable of getting married they are capable of children they are capable of raising children and so on and so forth now uh, all of this has reached the masses people have to uh, understand that they can lead a pretty normal life uh, you know as they take treatment as they continue to take their uh, treatment so success stories are going to play a major role and media will help us bridge the gap yes absolutely yeah. because we all follow media it will be very easy platform to reach even our audience like even though they are not opening up but we can reach to them so that is the gap okay ma'am actually the very basic understanding which even you you were talking like the psycho psychologist and psychiatrist so can you just elaborate like what is the basic difference when we have to go to psychiatrist and what is like when we have to go to psychologist yeah ma'am so please explain to us so basically both psychiatrists and psychologists are mental health practitioners we uh, practice behavioral science uh, the difference is psychiatrists are doctors uh, uh, so they complete um, uh, under graduation in medicine uh, you know the mbbs course and then take uh, specialization in mental health which is psychiatry okay. psychologists uh, basically uh, specialize in psychology which is behavioral science so they specialize in assessing and uh, understanding managing you know psychological emotional problems behavioral problems which could be linked to uh, psychiatric problems and physical problems so they uh, understand thought process in detail emotions okay. and the behavior uh, in detail now uh, psychiatrists and psychologists have to work hand in hand uh, because you know uh, whichever uh, science i mean science uh, it uh, it rests on the premise of something called the biopsychosocial model which means health or illness are by products of biological factors like let's say genetic factors 
psychological yes. factors like one's personality attitude one's belief mm-hmm. system social factors uh, uh, which are like family factors cultural factors so on so it's mm-hmm. quite self explanatory that uh, a psychiatrist and a psychologist have to go hand in hand in managing uh, problems now whom should i consult first well yes. whomever you consult first you know uh, if uh, if a psychiatrist feels that there is need for let's say a detailed assessment a psychological assessment like intelligence learning uh, disability or personality the patient is referred to a psychologist so if need for psychotherapy you know uh, we we refer okay. the patient to a psychologist if a patient has first approached the psychologist and the psychologist feels there's a need for a medicine the psychologist refers the patient to a psychiatrist so we have a way we work hand in hand yes ma'am yeah chitra ma'am you want to share anything on this like ma'am your audio your audio is muted ma'am yeah Yeah, so she has already put a lot of points. What I would la- add, like to add, is like uh, first of all, you should see whether the practitioner, because uh, MD in psychiatry will make them a psychiatrist. But for psychologists, there are a lot of people who are practicing. So we should see that credibility before a uh, client yes. goes there. Yes. Okay. Uh, and okay. because the MSc, MSc in psychology itself, we can call them as a psychologist. There are a oh. lot of divisions like counseling psychology, clinical psychology is there. When especially okay. when it comes to these mental health problems. so okay. what we generally do is talk therapy we talk to the clients for 45 minutes to 1 hour and uh, depending on the issues the sessions may go out to 6 to 7 sessions on an average sometimes okay. it can even take years also there are people who are on like in the personality disorders and all there are years and okay. uh, phd in psychology is an additional qualification and uh, clinical psychologists are the ones who deal with the you know they do the, the diagnosis part also the diagnosis of patient based on the clinical parameters We use a diagnostic procedure called DSM classification. That's five letters. So based on that, we classify and diagnose. Diagnosis is very important. If you do a wrong diagnosis, then the treatment goes for a toss. So okay. and then, like Man said, whenever there is a biological factor which is taking more adding time, into okay. like uh, bipolar disorder and schizophrenia, without psychiatric help, we can't do. Like she said rightly, we have to go hand in hand. But for various other problems like personality issues and mild anxiety and mild depression, all that psychologists will be able to take care of. Okay. Okay. Thank you so much, ma'am, for uh, making us understand this uh, thing. Okay. So the now current situation, whatever we are feeling, everybody is at home, and uh, the working women especially, they are feeling like uh, work from home has been given to them, but uh, they are sub- they are struggling. They are they are facing lot of mental stress to do it or to make it success. So can you just uh, throw some points how to do it, like how to ta- tackle that uh, mental stress? Uh, deepa ma'am you can share the thing yeah so um, a, a woman has a lot of uh, responsibilities lot of roles to uh, play so yeah. um, uh, working from home by itself uh, is a challenge now be it for the men or for the women who are working from home now uh, one will have to have a routine like i said you know so that we are able to differentiate between work and uh, you know Because you're working oh, from home, so yeah, we should not end up working all the time that we are awake. You know that we are at home. We mm-hmm. have to be able to concentrate and do quality work, whatever we are doing. So having a strict routine that way would uh, certainly help. So uh, having some kind of an understanding with family members, particularly when the women are working, that you know, okay, this is my work time, this is my workspace, and uh, at that time, I I need to do some dedicated work. Now. Um, helping out uh, with you know the household chores because uh, most have asked yes. our uh, domestic help also to you know uh, stay at home stay safe yes. so uh, finishing off the household work uh, taking care of the children now uh, children are also at home we have to be able to engage them at home uh, yes. children are also very anxious so you know we have to uh, Uh, we are overall in charge of of you know uh, so managing the complete thing yeah the the yeah. whole setup so yeah, taking uh, um, uh, following a, a schedule like ma'am said will certainly help and uh, taking some time out for one's own relaxation so that we are able to you know feel little stress free in this stressed out uh, environment that would help like i said earlier taking taking a break from gadgets for some time trying to spend some time uh, doing something that you always wanted to do but didn't have the time for uh, doing all of this will help 
now there there is some there's quite a concern rather about um, domestic violence partner violence you know uh, which has in fact increased further and as per uh, world health organization uh, it has actually tripled in in the last few weeks of uh, the lockdown you know world over world over across countries so um this is something uh, that that you know women are having to face and will have to deal with and uh, these are not able to step out of home uh, when we want to reach out for help we uh, a lot yeah. of women might you know still think that probably someone with uh, the infection needs priority needs uh, needs help so uh, just to highlight that you know if there is need for some kind of emotional help you want to talk it out you want to reach out for help there are a lot of uh, people available you know just across uh, the phone for help be it uh, be it you know tele counseling services or any kind of service uh, that uh, one would require yeah ma'am so uh, the program has quoted like children uh, nowadays like uh, managing children to house is a very ba- big challenge to any woman or any people at uh, sitting at house so uh, chitra my, my question to you is like how to manage kids in a productive way making them aware about the situation what is happening currently and making them safe also how to make it like how this uh, complete thing we can make it success okay here when we talk about kids the age range is from even right now from 2 years till 14 years so 13 yes, years ma'am. till the teenage so what i could suggest is first of all their comprehension about the right now situation may not be that great so mm. they won't understand what is actually happening and they may be partly happy that they are at home and not having to go to school also yes and, uh, as a parent to have a control over a child check discipline is very important check discipline means as a parent parenting itself is a skill right now and we have a lot of workshops right now going on so they should always have in hand two things one is the warmth and then is the control so we have to balance warmth plus control by for example giving some routines for them for a, uh, like they have to get up by this particular time and go to sleep by the time and what are the activities they can do in the given time and we we'll have to explore their hobbies as well and there are a lot of online courses going on even for kids and we have to engage them in the work and as kids they'll be definitely wanting our attention as a parents Yes. so we have to provide the time needed for them otherwise you will be in a trouble when you are in kitchen so <laughs> give them the right time and also go for the behavioral contract like if you do this so and so things you will be rewarded with this thing rewarded in the sense an extra screen time or a nice dish what your parents could give so they will also be very clear about what they have to do when the children goes for uncertainties when they, when they have a jobless because they are having so much of mental stimulation and we have to engage them in the right way like okay. uh, drawing or there are many activities when you open on like stuff and even the board games so we have to re- uh, you know explore it again and then start having some family times together after 6 o'clock or so so nice bonding and happen and people the children won't be so cranky they even they are occupied they are fine and the right love of uh, time of love as well as warmth will keep the control is very important you have to give the screen time like 3 hours or 4 hours per day morning to us evening to us strictly no more minutes after that so it's difficult to enforce it but the parents yeah and they have to consistently do it that is the key when they follow the children follow probably we can follow some behavioral strategies like giving them stars and at the end of the five star package they they can be given some reward so obviously these children will complete to follow the good discipline as well and and we have to appreciate them whenever they follow the right thing also so these are some of the methods by which we can keep them under our control okay ma'am here i have a doubt like we have age group from 5 to 14 so 14 age group after 10 like kids have their own sort of thing like they will be having their own so how to deal with the elder kids like little young uh, more uh, like uh, teenage okay whatever i yeah, teenage partly for the teenage as well but teenagers are very diff- difficult to you know deal with yes uh, generally also and that too in this situation where the teenagers are like kind of a socializing people it's very difficult to handle them right now because the moms would have been happy sending them to school or to <laughs> the play or in the you know the apartment or on all that but that nothing is happening so we are yes. with each other right now so teenagers definitely we can't separate them from social media mm-hmm. as well as from gadgets or a yeah. you know, whatever it is so that's not the thing we have to aspire for please give them the time that's fine uh, but then we have to give them a right limitation to that okay they should not okay. get addicted to it as well and you okay. have to encourage them to do something which will not be productive for them as well like you know mm-hmm. for taking the books and reading at least 2 hours or 1 hour a day 
their okay. school groups or whatever and you can encourage them to follow their hobbies by you know enrolling into some free online courses or very uh, whatever is can they can afford and all that meaningful online courses where they can uh, improve their talent as well so okay. by ha again having a routine because nowadays i hear from lot of my families like teenagers are not allowed to sleep till 11 o'clock in the morning and they are yes yes it is a big challenge actually for parents curtail first of all parents have to be a role model when they themselves follow such routine you can't expect a child to follow so <laughs> absolutely as, as a parent first of all you should show them the right behavior as well because your habit should be again corrected so parenting is not easy as we think first we should do law put lot of efforts only then your child will uh, children will come out to be a person what you expect from them yes ma'am absolutely yeah deepa ma'am you wanted to share anything on that for uh, yeah just to add to uh, what uh, ma'am said that uh, in particular this is uh, about handling children and teenagers maybe an important question uh, that we have to address is how do we talk about our uh, how do we talk about corona to our uh, children and yes. how do we uh, address uh, this with our teenagers so mm -hmm. um, uh, I, I actually there's some interesting uh, health information uh, comics that uh, has been released by ministry of um, health and family welfare as well as world health organization which can be used for um, children from about uh, 6 to 10 years of age where they just explain corona you know corona is now sounds very big it sounds very complicated yes. it sounds very scary children so maybe yes. just trying to them it's nothing but flu it is just fever cold cough you uh, that you generally tend to get but then what are the extra precautions that you need to take, to take and that. make them make them do that see with okay. uh, teenagers be it with teenagers or with uh, children uh, encouraging them to express what they feel about the current uh, situation so now uh, in fact uh, it uh, also appeared in the newspaper you know few weeks after the outbreak happened that children are complaining sleepless nights getting night that you know what if uh, they contract the uh, Okay. illness or what happens contract the illness so uh, these are important concerns that have to be addressed there's no running away from it we have to sit with our uh, and with our teenagers to explain just the facts just the facts is more than enough and uh, uh, help them play a responsible role for themselves take uh, okay. necessary uh, hygiene measures social distancing for themselves uh, which is more than enough in down their anxiety but at the time there is a need to enable them to encourage what they feel express what they feel understood ma so uh, moving to the next question is a very big routine change happened in our everybody's life okay everyone is uh, uh, having a routine change a drastic routine routine change so in our in our family our elder people are there okay elder mother father like our parents are there so they are facing a kind of disturbance or maybe a kind of thing so how to deal with them because they are they are the person who are who are always staying at home so they have certain set of routines and now it is big disturbance for them so how to deal with that situation yeah ma'am chitra ma'am you can uh, share your thoughts on that okay so when it comes to elderly people they are the ones usually they stay at home but uh, they prefer to go to temples or uh, other places at least weekly once or twice so then now for them they're not a big routine change but then they may have lot of fear even as a children who can have the fear the even the elder person obviously because yes they say this corona may affect them the elderly population more or it is a mixture of factors different but then it will affect their emotions as well so hmm. first of all uh, the you know the person who is like the daughter or son of the particular person in the family should hmm. also sit and talk to them as we talk to the kids so to clarify you know what is their idea about corona and all sometimes the people may be act as if they are so bold and confident but it may not be so inside they may be having lot of fear that is why they go to this newspaper or mobile to see keep track of things or okay, they'll be yeah. worried about their loved ones who is in foreign countries and all that so we'll have to break mm -hmm. the myth and give them the reality and the facts like uh, dr deepa said rightly so we'll have to give them the facts and then they can also try to focus on things at home also like doing some puja and telling some moral okay. stories to the kids you know passing their wisdom the elderly people are the ones who are having lot of wisdom to pass can, yes on. yeah so they have to the, the right time to for you no know, pass that kind of wisdom to their uh, younger generation who are going who are stuck at home as well right now so at least mm -hmm. half an hour one hour or talk to them 
but the kids may not like it but then you have to put it away <laughs> yeah by, by not boring them but telling it in a right way because now people are actually liking lot of our old uh, you know epics and all the punan and yeah so whatever religion you follow please go on uh, elder elders don't be stuck with all this kind of uh, corona stuff whatever is going to happen is going to happen we don't have control over it <laughs> all we have to do is follow our hygiene and all that but uh, i think elders are all having a very good routine so no problem with them but only thing is they can focus their mind by doing some med- meditation yoga whatever simple yoga they could do or doing okay. some prayer rituals every day that will calm them down and uh, mm. by, uh, other people don't allow them to watch all these news and don't allow them that's the only thing we can tell don't give them so much <laughs> access to it which can increase our fear increase the fear yeah ma'am yeah deepa ma'am you want to add anything on that so just yeah uh, because there's uh, uh, so much around that you know uh, people who are uh, above 60 have to be very careful and uh, those who have other comorbid medical conditions like diabetes hypertension are at risk it's just that uh, do the usual uh, you know uh, whatever you have been doing health like taking your medicines on eating the right kind of food with the right kind of dietary restrictions Mm-hmm. and uh, try to make some uh, space for physical activity for many elders who yes. have got used to uh, walking outside and you know there's a huge restriction right now uh, that could have uh, played a major role uh, physical activity could have played a major role in uh, in you know maintaining their health so that uh, you will have to find uh, they'll have to find an alternate way of doing it while staying indoors some basic kind of physical activity or walking in the space uh, just outside the house or you know within the compound uh, you know which is uh, safe for them yeah ma'am uh, now uh, uh, it's really wonderful like all the helpful suggestion you guys have given to us and i'm sure the audience also have will follow certain like whatever is applicable to them they will definitely follow it and they'll get support and support for the situation to deal with it so now we can take the chat questions whatever uh, like lot of questions which i can see here in our uh, screen so uh, let me take first question which is i am going through a mental stress and don't uh, feel talking much to the family member often also because of this lockdown not able to socialize so how to cope up with the stress maintain good vibes to the family member so uh, ma'am please guide chitra ma'am please guide uh, okay so i think the question is about uh, feeling depressed is it yes yes absolutely okay so feeling depressed itself uh, first of all they don't like to socialize as well so they are like withdrawn people and having lot of sense of hopelessness and uh, low confidence and all that they will already will be you know struggling with all these emotions yeah so uh, right now seeking a psychologist and psychiatrist help may be little challenge but then online sessions are available with uh, both of them psychiatrist and mm-hmm. psychologist as well but then uh, now what we can do is uh, psychiatrists i don't know how far they can help with the medication because uh, you know the prescription cannot be given to us online i think i think dr deepa can uh, tell more on it but then mm-hmm. online sessions can be done but be, even before that how you can manage is by trying that the thoughts definitely will be negative right now because yes. uh, already the thing is very grim and all that so negative thoughts will be there what i would suggest is if the depression is not so severe in severe conditions whatever we say cannot actually reach them only some medications can help them to calm down but if the de- depression is like mild or moderate in that case you can again for depression people what we say is following a nice routine you like it or not but more we would like to sleep on the bed more we feel worthless so i would suggest them to just go uh, no uh, be resilient and bounce back from that feeling of being stuck at the bed itself and get up and do a small task at least a small task like you know having to just to prepare a coffee or something and when you do a small task then your energy levels will little bit improve and then that follows by another task and then you can connect to friends to your friends who are like in lost cell connection for a long time one or two friends at least through online sessions you can i mean uh, through the video call or hangout it's all available now we can have a face to face sessions with them so that will rekindle your past and give some positive vibes to your everyday life no as well as whatever you thought the depression is basically because they feel like nothing good is going to happen in their life it's all about your th- thinking process but it's not the truth so we'll have to manage your negative thoughts and try to inculcate some positive affirmations like you know i'm safe and secure i'm bold and confident i'll be able to go through the situation so this kind of affirmations you like it or not when you keep telling initially the system will not accept it but then slowly it will go inside your system and they will start feeling better after a while so these kind of things will try to help them to come out of this very grim situation 
Okay. Uh, yeah, ma'am. So uh, the next question which I wanted to take is, uh, is mood swing during period time is uh, real or a myth? Uh, uh, how to manage this uh, between the couple? So Deepa, ma'am, can you just throw some light on this? Yeah, mood swings uh, before uh, the, uh, you know, uh, menses or before the periods is very much a reality and it is a harsh reality. So 80% uh, of uh, women uh, definitely experience some physical symptoms and emotional symptoms uh, just before their periods. So mm -hmm. physical symptoms would be something you know, um, uh, feeling uh, heavy or uh, having you know, feeling like you have some kind of fluid collection inside, feeling heavy or uh, breast enlargement, breast tenderness and some kind of aches and pains, like headache and so on. Emotional symptoms could be like, you know, getting more irritable than usual, more angry than usual, which is the uh, problem here probably and uh, feeling sad quite often, getting uh, tearful very often, crying for no reason, crying for very small reasons, um, having um, uh, mood that are very difficult to handle. So these are the kind of uh, symptoms uh, women get to experience and I'm sure many of the women, so as it goes in about 80% women do experience at least mild, which are, uh, which by themselves uh, you know the symptoms get better as uh, one gets uh, the you know the periods and it's about a five to seven day affair and it gets better it is kind of manageable now there are yeah. 20 percent yeah. who have quite severe the same symptoms that i mentioned are quite severe very difficult to manage they end up with a lot of problems relationships at workplace at the personal level those five to seven days could be like hell so that is where it means that uh, 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 some kind of intervention might be uh, required. Now, in general, what we have seen is physical activity helps uh, trying to restrict uh, one's caffeine use, alcohol use during that time helps, uh, you know, okay. have, uh, any kind of support, you know, any kind of psychological, emotional helps. Now, for okay. those who have severe symptoms, uh, it might require medicines, of course, and uh, therapy, which will uh, which will help them. Now, okay. uh, it is a well understood fact. This is something that is there, and uh, a woman has to deal with, and probably even a couple has to deal with. So, uh, it's quite surprising, but there has been, uh, you know, some kind of work to find out how how far, uh, you know, uh, the spouses' uh, cooperation has helped. And uh, to one surprise, it has helped. Now, apart from the measures that I mentioned, you know, about physical therapy, about uh, seeking psychological support, taking medicines, when uh, it has been found that, you know, when the spouse helps, uh, you know, uh, emotionally understanding, basically empathizing with, uh, with uh, one's, uh, with the lady's symptoms, uh, it has helped quite a bit for, uh, you know, in the relief of symptoms. So, uh, okay. certainly when, uh, when you have, so it is first about for the husbands to understand that this is a biological phenomenon, it is a biological phenomenon, it does exist, it does happen. And um, one has to empathize that uh, she is going through a tough uh, time, but then about five to six days. So, just trying to, you know, be a little supportive, uh, trying to be not too demanding on the work front trying to avoid uh, talking controversial uh, uh, issues, you know, at, at that time. These are simple, small measures that could uh, definitely help. Okay. Yeah. The next question which I am seeing here is, uh, lockdown is a kind of uncertain situation now. Does this uncertainty affect our body and mind? Uh, ma'am, Chitra ma'am, you can throw some light on this. Yeah. It definitely do affect because it can compromise our immune system. And that mm. way, the existing conditions as well as the new conditions also can develop because stress is capable of causing any kind of consequences. For example, the periods may get delayed uh, for a woman in that case. So because of stress itself, and you can have aches and pains, or you can have a lot of mental health conditions aggravating like anxiety disorders. Anxiety disorder means like people having overwhelming fear and uh, you know, thoughts about future will be cramming them. So these kind of conditions may aggravate. So these are the effects and depression also can set in depression and uh, new mental health conditions also can form or people who are already having some mild mental health condition, their conditions may definitely aggravate during this period because of the uncertainty which are prevailing. 
okay okay and it is it is it will going to extend also so that is also creating a more uh, you know yeah. problem to their mind and health yeah so the next question is uh, i have diabetes and hypertension and i'm not able uh, sorry i'm at a greater risk of corona virus what should i do at this point so uh, ma'am we can like deepa ma'am you can answer this yeah so like we already uh, discussed uh, that um, it's now uh, all of us are at risk of contracting the infection if we do not follow the uh, guidelines that uh, we are being provided with so about be it about social distancing be it about uh, frequent handling and uh, you know steps like uh, like those now uh, to have these health conditions have to just be uh, uh, you know uh, a little cautious in uh, now uh, when we want to step for let's say any uh, essential commodity so uh, we can try to avoid them from stepping out of the house so th that is that is yeah. a measure that we can take taking care of their own health by taking their medicines uh, correctly medicines on time try, uh, trying to do that little physical activity that could uh, help maintaining their health and let you know guarding yourself from so much of information that is around us so you know taking a break from news and uh, trying to do some kind of uh, activity that would be relaxing yeah ma'am okay next question is here can you throw some light on pregnant women healthcare during this period so yeah chitra ma'am please uh, guide us on this for pregnant yeah for pregnant Sorry. women also there is nothing like anything special so only thing is they have to manage their thoughts and about this fearful condition okay. because yeah. these people can have exaggerated fear situations about what if i get the delivery time and what if the hospitals are closed and what would happen so and what if i go to a hospital and contract the virus and what what might happen to my baby these are the kind of unnecessary negative thoughts which may pop up in their head right now so mm -hmm. all we have to do is fear is capable of causing these kind of negative thoughts but then we have to understand that only when you listen to those thoughts it can you know take into multiple proportions into your mind just, yeah just do your like ma'am said just do your everyday routine and so just follow the government's instruction nothing bad is going to happen to you without your knowledge what mm -hmm. you can do is do everything which is under your control as a pregnant woman whatever your gynecologist suggested everything all the procedures and make sure you are positive and stay away from stress at this time it is more challenging i understand but still you got to keep yourself more positive compared to any other woman because there is one more uh, soul in you so we have to follow yeah. all the routine but then don't become so fearful so that to the extent that it affects everything so mm. because once you become so fearful what you do is engage in lot of hand washing rituals and lot of things which is out of proportion and which is going to in increase your anxiety so mm. you have to understand one thing why the thoughts are coming it is just asking you to follow the routine when you follow yes. your like your job is done that's all no need to think over it again and again or worrying it's not going to cause anything you have mm. to just tell your mind i will see when it comes and just manage when it comes that's the only time you are going to face the problem because every day you are traumatizing yourself by thinking thousand times yes ma'am absolutely that is what the common like everybody is doing in this state mm. Yes. by hearing all these things we are getting uh, into it okay the next question is i am married from past 2 years i wanted to conceive i have a huge society and family pressure how to deal with it so in this situation deepa ma'am please uh, guide us so um yeah, uh, couples um, becoming anxious to conceive uh, which we would otherwise call as infertility has become quite a common problem and uh, quite many uh, young couples who are having to you know uh, go through a lot of um, you know testing and procedures and it has become very common this a very important factor which which influences uh, you know one's uh, cycles and one's reproductive health now um, stress uh, be it any kind of stress you know it could be physical stress uh, or, you know the conditions under which we are working or you know any illness or any kind of emotional stress be it through a relationship or uh, you know work related emotional stress or any any sort of stress um, tends to it our stress related hormone now stress related hormones uh, should get activated while in response to stress but then when there is either a major stress or repeated minor stress you know in our daily life uh, the the system keeps getting activated for this kind of stress now that system does not let the reproductive hormones get secreted the way uh, the manner in which they have to 
so then this stress leads to you know uh, periods related problems so what we call as the polycystic ovarian problem or any uh, you know uh, kind of problem reproductive health that could uh, you know add on to the infertility problem on top of it the burden of infertility by itself like uh, uh, you know uh, the uh, subscriber has asked you know there's family pressure social pressure you haven't had a child yet yes. have you got yourself yeah. tested you know are you going for any treatment all of this further adds to the stress so you know um, somewhere trying to uh, one stress levels to yoga meditation you know positive uh, mental health strike ma'am said positive affirmations all of that will uh, help a big way in bringing down one stress levels which will take our system to normal okay so we'll go to the next question is uh, all family member are at home all work has also increased i am getting irritation and anger what should i do at uh, to handle this situation it is very common i guess this question is very common for all of the housewife especially so uh, chitra ma'am can you uh, can you tell uh, something about this yeah so it is again i would say psychologically it's all about how you take it probably i think this person's workload is really more that's why she is getting more irritated <laughs> okay so all, all you have to do is do some delegation as a leader but then when people don't accept the delegation it becomes a problem it, it becomes a problem. work sharing work sharing like you have to involve your spouse and your kids in the work so that you can have some me time where you can take care of yourself take a mental break and come back and do your routine you know it's all about how you take this scenario what you have to do is see it in a positive way you like it or not your spouse is not going to stay with you all 24 by 7 and this is the time when you see probably you have to check on your relationship status like how uh, not the status in the sense how your relationship is actually going on for a long time over a period of time so if you're getting irritation and all of the negative emotion it says something about your relationship we have to check your relationship thing right now because okay. many, uh, many times when we think that okay we, when we say we are like locked down with the loved ones we obviously feel very happy imagine you're locked down with the person of your dreams so obviously we'll be happy and uh, even don't even care when we have to cook and clean also i'm happy that you are there but we don't when we have the such kind of positive attitude towards people around us then the irritation sets in so this is the red alert for you to work on your relationships i would say from this is the right time and you can't run away from this because let's say you after your retirement 50 60 and all you have to face the same drama of corona virus what it uh, already given a preview show but then you are going to face the reality after our retirement so the life is going to be even more worse after that so now itself this is like a wake up call for you try working the same relationship whatever is existing if you really can't work out then there is an option of separation or a divorce but then when it is possible you have to take some steps to work on the relationship so that this kind of irritation and all that stuff can be managed probably it's also a side effect of stress you are going through also so we can got be. to manage, yeah stress coping strategy also got to follow otherwise it is also a possibility like i told you about the relationship crisis even with your children because they are not like the you no know, responsible i would even say the parents please give some responsibility and train them to be a responsible person mm. even like washing dishes and all that they like it or not you have to train them to do it in that to way what the way you can make them responsible and good enough as well as you can relieve your stress mm -hmm. okay a uh, next question is i am a working woman and a single parent too i have a big concern of job security feeling very depressed please guide me so in this point like for job security deepa ma'am can you just share your thoughts on this these are uncertain times now uh, there, there is absolutely no certainty around us and uh, job and is quite understandable so one has to first acknowledge their feeling of you know job uncertainty that okay yeah now these are certain times so you know that is the reason for the job uncertainty right now this has nothing to do with one's capacity or one's skills it is much beyond all of that you know uh, it's a very complicated situation here we are uh, we are not knowing uh, when will uh, you know things return to see we are talking about the new so under such um, uh, conditions having job in say is completely understandable what one has to do is uh, understand that whatever certain done this is a temporary situation be an end point things will get back to you know uh, some shape uh, uh, there's no uh, you know there is some hope uh, if not uh, now maybe sometime later you know it's not that we are never going to be able to find a job we are certainly going to be able to find a job 
so let's understand the 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 uh, in which we are right now the situation by itself is quite uncertain so uh, you have to uh, you know uh, look at it from that perspective take some time out to discuss about one's uncertainties and one's anxiety with trusted loved ones you know so uh, so that uh, it gives us a sense of relief it makes us feel better yeah. one thing to ask here ma'am uh, actually uh, parents are at home and they are always watching tv like social media is available and they like 70 plus years so is this affecting their adversely into their you know health or how to manage this because we cannot ask them to stop watching it and unless and until like it is directly affecting them so how to deal with that situation uh, chitra ma'am please uh, suggest something on that yeah so uh, th- when you say the age is like 70 plus and all yes. yeah so it is very difficult to handle such age groups actually. yes now they are like again uh, going back to their kids only they are like more of like kids only <laughs> kids so when only. you say some give instruction to them they are not obviously going to follow such instruction but then the, as you rightly said all this kind of whatsapp messages and media things are going to increase because yes. uh, when we get more information they say ignorance is bliss so when we are more Correct. informed about these things then you get more fear again so uh, right away we can't go and tell them stop it or snatch those gadgets from them try to Correct. engage them in other activities try to engage them like how you are going to handle kids the similar way you are going to handle the elders in the family as well because those elders who are like already having a right wisdom and all that wouldn't do this only elders who are having anxiety issues and all that will involve in such activities so we have to engage them in the way where they can express their emotions to people around once the expression of emotion is done itself then they will feel little relieved and fact sharing okay then you have to tell them this is the actual situation which is prevailing and not like what you imagine so when mm-hmm. you are having a open communication with them they can you know the touch would touch the reality as well and uh, uh, and, and ask the kids and grand uh, grandchildren to communicate with them play with them like you have to just distract them from all those gadgets mm-hmm. distraction is the mm-hmm. only key yeah understood and uh, one question which i personally wanted to ask is uh, being a doctor maybe lot of people would have asked you that are you not getting angry or that uh, anxiety ness or stress because you are into this field so how you guys are are you getting angry first of all so uh, like what what is your answer like is it is it a myth or is it a true things or how it is yeah uh, ma'am deepa ma'am you can suggest i think uh, we all are getting angry and uh, we are no exception uh, to that uh, <laughs> probably uh, what we have studied has uh, helped us in probably bringing out our anger in uh, healthy ways so uh, in uh, that way and that is uh, that is what we try to uh, with our uh, patients and clients as well uh, you know but uh, otherwise dealing with these kind of uh, negative emotions does happen uh on a daily basis for everyone in their personal life professional life and i don't think uh, anyone is an exception to that and none of us are immune to that as well you know so we uh, we might uh, be knowing a lot of uh, techniques and that but then we are uh, we are also uh, victims to such kind of negative emotions so yeah. uh, it does happen yeah chitra uh, like how you are uh, doing what all practices you are doing in your routine life like what all good things so can you share with us sir yeah, sure actually we are all humans so first of all we can't say doctor will not get fear, a fever or something we also <laughs> will have negative emotion that's common but then as we said rightly one tool what we have is awareness so yes. we are aware and mindful when we are getting into such things you know some people get into stress and they are not aware of it and get into the bad things but then we are aware when we are getting into that kind of mood and upsetting feelings and all that we try to bounce back from it by following some kind of mental rituals as well as some activities as well so we mm. make sure that we balance our work and life because when the life will be more uh, nice and interesting is not only doing a productive work plus we have to always switch off from those works and have some fun activities as well like uh, before yeah. this lockdown period i am into zumba dancing and all so i am okay. into such things and i go i am a regular gym i go to gym as well regularly so i take mm-hmm. care of my physical health and mental health and i i am not going to play the role of a psychologist when i go to zumba class i just i just chill there 
so i have to just take a break from my routine every day and talk to my friends catch up with them so some coping up methods positive coping up methods and uh, even telling positive affirmations to myself when i feel down all these are some of the strategies and the secrets which keep us going on in this tough time yeah ma'am actually thank you so much for giving us uh, wonderful thoughts and wonderful sharing which you guys are following and you are helping others also to do it in their life Uh, so looks like we have covered everything into the questions and now we have a uh, uh, need to make an announcement we have a segment for corona virus like we have a web segment so all the audience and all the viewers can go and uh, check our web segment uh, which has all kind of information and it is completely relevant completely like it will be a guide for you guys to handle the situation and we required your all support uh, to improve our services thank you so much both of the doctors here and uh, it was really a, a you know wonderful discussion with you both and i would like to thank all of my uh, audience also here like who have joined and participated taking out their time like you know have joined us and we we are definitely uh, seeking your suggestions feedback and you know to improve our services so we'll be sharing the necessary things to you and uh, via sms or maybe a emailer will reach to you to share your feedback on the session and for the next session definitely we will be adding certain things which you are suggesting to us thank you for all of us for your participation for today's webinar hope to see you again stay home stay safe thank you so much